We're journeying through Somerset today, a county which has long been a favourite for our rural escapees. And its popularity does not appear to be waning. Come rain or shine, it's a county for all seasons. At any time of year, Somerset is special. But now, with the changing colour of the trees, that autumnal smell in the air and the leaves rustling underfoot, well, in my opinion, the county goes from being special to almost magical. Think of Somerset in the southwest of England and most likely a vision of lush rolling hills, expansive plains and architectural splendour come to mind. But the county is known as much for its food as it is for its landmarks and scenery. People come here for the cider. Uh, we've got Glastonbury. We've got a whole bunch of art trails and foodie trails and there's a bit of everything in Somerset. The uber trendy town of Bruton is a hub of creativity and celebrities. Its medieval streets are lined with award-winning restaurants, plus an enticing selection of independent shops and services. Whilst nearby Wincanton is renowned for its race course, as well as its links to fantasy novelist Terry Pratchett, who frequented the town's pubs. But it's when travelling between these artistic centres that you're reminded again of the county's natural beauty. You can be driving along a bypass just to get from one place to another and you've got breathtaking views. It's one of the most delightful places in the world and the people are as gorgeous as the landscape. Right, time to meet today's couple and find out what's driving their move to the West Country and in particular Somerset. Hello, I'm Janet. Hello, I'm Brian and we would love to escape to the country. Now, we're in our home on wheels at the moment. A bit cramped for a house, but even so, we love it. So it's one of our hobbies. When retirees Janet and Brian aren't out on the road, they live in the Berkshire town of Reading, in a home built from scratch by former builder Brian. Right, this is our house. It's a chalet bungalow. We've been in for 40 years. We built it. Now, pan shop and I'm going to disappear down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a big garden. Yeah, we love the house. <laughs> All right, that will come down a bit. Um, yeah, it's a really nice house. It's just the area, really. Having once been surrounded by fields, the growth of several housing developments has now made their area feel much busier. And it's not the only thing to have changed in 40 years. That's a better picture of the front of the house as it was in 81, June 81. And that's my two-year-old daughter who's now 43. The couple's three children are now building lives with their own families. But a move to Somerset would bring them closer to youngest daughter Rosie, who lives in the county with her husband and their two-year-old daughter Mabel. We would like to go to Somerset. We've got to know some of the villages. So if there's any way you can help us find the right house, that would be uh, much appreciated. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> For their maximum budget of £625,000, Janet and Brian would like a property in a village location with countryside views and space for their motorhome. Inside, they don't mind whether it's a turnkey or a fixer-upper, but they'd like a minimum of two bedrooms and a lovely bonus would be an ensuite bathroom. I'm thrilled to be helping them and we're all coming together to feel the leaves crunch beneath our feet before the house hunting begins. So Janet and Brian, welcome to Autumnal Somerset. Thank Beautiful, you. isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. It is lovely. It's really lovely, yeah. yeah. You've been brought here really thanks to your daughter, right? Yeah. yeah. What does your daughter think about it? Oh, she said, she loves hurry the up, idea. Yeah. hurry yeah. up, baby yeah. number two's on the way. We baby sitting. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> so, what do you think Somerset is going to give you in terms of a, a new lifestyle? A more relaxed lifestyle, hopefully. We want to we wanna get involved with things locally. I mean, you haven't done the process of moving house for four <laughs> decades. Do you know what to expect? Well, it's, I, I think through camping, we do try and find sort of places out of the way. Um, and so I think that's a way of getting into it, really. So 
your experience of moving house in the last 40 years is camping. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, well, you're experts. I, I didn't realise I was working with <laughs> experts in this field. Well, you're in safe hands. Should we get going? Yeah. Okay. Good, 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 good. Our journey through Somerset begins in the village of Drakeford. Around a five minute drive away is the larger village of Cheddar, famous for producing, well, I probably don't need to tell you. Nearby Cheddar Gorge also plays its part in the village's popularity. Formed over a million years ago, it's the largest gorge in England. Both villages sit on the southern edge of the stunning Mendip Hills. And from the entrance to property number one, it will be very hard to forget that fact. Now you'd hope, coming uphill, you get a view. And you shan't be disappointed. Oh, wow. That's what we asked for. That's lovely. You sound pleasantly surprised there, Brian. I am. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking if I can see a view like this from here, imagine what it's going to be like yeah. from the bedroom. From the, yeah. Upstairs. It's going to be lovely, it, isn't it? Yeah. I'm impressed. Oh, good. Yeah. Let's go inside. Lovely. Let's have a look. This imposing stone property was built in 1832 to house the local quarryman and his family. Covering almost 2,500 square feet, it's set over three floors and requires some updating in places. Right then, let's start with this kitchen because well, I rather like it and I'm hoping you'll do oh, too. Nice, oh, I like that. Nice range. Oh, yeah, yeah. The view's it's... amazing. We could most probably chop a wee bit off that hedge so you've got yeah, an even better that. view once yeah. you've sat down. I like the kitchen in general. How does this compare with your kitchen at the moment then? It's very similar. Um, it is. The sink is exactly the same, I think. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. And That's we haven't quite... got the table. Yeah. You know, grandchildren a few years' time painting or doing their homework yeah. when you've got them for yeah, a weekend or something like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it'd be lovely for them, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it just? Yeah. yeah. First room, and it's thumbs up by the looks of it. Sure. Yeah. Let's keep looking around. Okay. Okay. All right, so, yet more views. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. Really well configured, yeah, this nice house. Actually, mate. Yeah, mm. you're sat down there. It's been lovely. Yeah. You could make that a window seat. Oh, yes. You could, actually. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I've always wanted one that of those. Yes. Yeah. Reading a book in a nice mm. sunny afternoon. Yeah. I'll we'll have to there find someone are. that could do that. Little job for you. You can do the woodwork, <laughs> I'll do the sewing. <laughs> there you go. When that job's done, Janet and Brian could move on to the large space off the living room, which could be transformed into a hobby room, or perhaps more extensive utility. Heading upstairs, there are four bedrooms on the first floor, and the ones at the front benefit from a fine outlook. In my opinion, this is the main bedroom. This is wonderful isn't it sat in bed cup of tea that view yeah it's lovely how about mucking around with this house because you've Good got oh yeah. the technical term is whopping how is it whopping great big space above <laughs> as well it looks like an old nightclub and <laughs> the owners right. raised their children here and they right. said when well, they've all got mates over just go upstairs yeah Keep it Do as a nightclub then. <laughs> Open up a nightclub. Yeah. yeah. That's an opportunity. Yes. I'm going to let the couple explore the rest of the bedrooms at their leisure. This property was quite literally built into the hillside, so the bedroom at the rear opens out onto the garden. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Quite... Really bright. Whoa. Oh, wow. Oh, a lovely door going out to the garden. Yeah, they've really made it a lovely bedroom, haven't they? Have a look in the... Is this the ensuite? Oh, oh, oh I wow. say. <laughs> oh. Really lovely, isn't it? Yeah. This house is kind of deceiving because on first look, it feels and looks Victorian. But being built in 1832, it's got more influences of the Georgian period, helped in no small part by the fact that it was a quarryman's cottage, so they'd have spent a bit more money on it. But you can see it actually, very symmetrical building. I think they rather like it. Oh gosh, it's huge. Oh, didn't expect <laughs> that. A little kitcheny area. Yeah. 
and a bathroom. It's like a you know, self-contained flat. It is. Flat. It'd be ideal, wouldn't it, yeah. if uh, you have family to stay. They could do their own thing up here. The garden covers a quarter of an acre, wrapping around three sides of the property, with a decked area at the front which overlooks the large lawn and the cracking views beyond. Here they are. How'd you get on? Well, we've had a good tour round. Yeah. Um, it's a big house inside. It yeah. really is deceptively big, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Is it too big? Yeah. It could be too really? big. Um, the ongoing cost yeah. of the maintenance, I think. Um, might be a bit too much for us. OK. Depending on the price, obviously. So, how much do you think this is on the market for? Ooh. I think that this is probably 625. That's, I reckon, around about 625, 630. Well, very good guesses. This is on the market for, I was around £625,000. Oh! Wow. Oh, that was that. a good guess, wasn't it? This 200-year-old quarryman's cottage provides plenty of flexible living space, over three storeys, with a large kitchen diner, two reception rooms and five bedrooms. In need of a little bit of work, it's priced at £625,000, but having been on the market for almost a year, there's potential for the right buyers to get a good deal here. It was a nice surprise viewing all the different rooms, especially upstairs, I was amazed. There's just so many little rooms, um, you keep finding them. I think Brian may be thinking, oh my goodness, there's quite a few jobs to do here, she'll have me doing. <laughs> well, the views are amazing, aren't they? I can't believe every window you look out of in the front of the house is just stunning. I just feel for me um, that it's a bit on the big side. There are a number of things that need doing, but I'm sure someone that can, can afford it with some extra cash left over um, could make a, a wonderful house of this. Despite a desire for country living, many of our house hunters want the benefit of a town from time to time and Somerset is blessed with an enviable selection. I'm shipping Janet and Brian off to perennially cool Froome, recently named the most stylish town in the UK. But don't let that lead you to believe that Froome is all about image because, as my couple are about to discover, it's got style and substance. Information. Ah. Oh, look. Broom Walking Festival. Oh, that'd be us, wouldn't it? Take your pick yeah. from 17 guided walks. Oh, yeah. cheese and grey. That's quite a lot going on, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Located on the eastern edge of the Mendip Hills and 13 miles south of Bath, the town has been inhabited since at least the 7th century and was known for its cloth trade until the industry declined in the 19th century. Quite high, these buildings, aren't they? Oh, it's a museum. In Froome's artisan quarter, Catherine Hill and its surrounding cobbled streets are home to more than 50 independent shops. A mark, perhaps, of how much the town enjoys keeping things local. The community spirit is strong. We have lots of opportunities and groups that go on um, for people to become part of something, to feel valued. And I think generally it's a lovely, lovely place to live. And um, there's a sense of freedom and fresh air and... Um, just being able to live your best life. The town is famous for its vibrant art scene and hosts a variety of activities throughout the year, including the Froome Independent, a lively street market held once a month. To find out about the types of events on offer in town, Janet and Brian are heading to a 17th century farm building turned concert hall, where director Steve MacArthur can tell them all about Froome's art scene. So what is the culture like? around this area in Froome? For the size of the town, it's about, I think, 28,000 people, it's extraordinary. There's six or seven places you can go and listen to live music, uh, mm. popular classical music, all sorts of things. There's five dance organisations, oh, wow. stroke oh, studios, um, amazing art scene, and it's all very accessible. 
the cheese and grain here, for example, we have 120 performances a year right across a range of music. Um, and compared to cities, it's affordable too. Uh, uh, we had Paul McCartney play here in June. Tickets were twenty-five pounds. Oh, really? Yeah, no. Oh, yes, um, yeah, so that's eyebrow raising, isn't Why? it? Um, you can't get much of a, a bigger rack than that. <laughs> no, room, no, so. no. I suppose not. Well, Macca might not always be in town, but spaces like this demonstrate Froome's commitment to making art and culture accessible to all. Should Jenna and Brian settle nearby, I think they could be sure of a warm welcome when they drop by for a visit. We're travelling into the Polden Hills, heading for the village of Shapwick. Many of the properties in this pretty village are built from local limestone, and although Shapwick might be small, it has a good range of community groups operating out of the local village hall. There's also a cricket club, which is worth joining for the view from the pavilion alone. The streets of the village are laid out in a ladder formation, a style once typical of the county. And on one of the quieter rungs is the second property we've come to see. OK, so, this is us. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. It looks quite spacious from what I can see at the back there. Room for the motor home. Mm, yeah, this is a semi, so... It wasn't our ideal choice, but... It's... You never know. You never know, never do you? What, what's your issue with semis? You, are you noisy neighbours? No. Yeah, I no, suppose No, we're not um... noisy neighbours. <laughs> what makes you noisy? It's singing and dancing we do. <laughs> there you go. Should we look inside? Yeah, Ooh, yes. sure. Let's go. The oldest parts of this attractive semi-detached cottage date back to 1800, with two extensions added in the past 20 years. One such extension is the kitchen, where we're starting our tour. And having been vacated by the owners just days ago, the property is now unfurnished. Oh, that's very, oh, it's very nice. cottagey, isn't it? It's yeah. nice, actually. Dining, dining room table. Oh. Like a mini range. Yeah. Effectively. Yeah. That's lovely, isn't it? It is lovely, isn't it? Yeah. You have to use your imagination, yeah. but you can see that this is altogether a different proposition, isn't it, to the last yeah, place? It is. Yeah. It is, yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah. Lovely floor. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Somewhere for seating mm. here. Yes. Well, yes. if you like somewhere for seating here, but I've got a really nice option here. Ah. So this room would be bathed in light. Oh, gosh. Oh. Wow. This is really well done, isn't it? Yes. I oh, think so. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. This, is, uh, this is not a cheap job. This, I'm really mm. impressed, actually. Well, I'm impressed that you're impressed because you're a builder. Yeah. And I know you've got high standards yourself. Yeah. And so if you, if you like this, then that's got to be good news. Yeah, it is. It is lovely. I do like this. Yeah, I do like this, <laughs> don't you? Is this your favourite yeah. in the house? So far. Well, there's still so much more to see here, Janet. Another living room with an ingle nook fireplace and wood burning stove provides a cosier alternative to the garden room. There's also a study downstairs, whilst upstairs lie three double bedrooms and a bathroom complete with a freestanding tub. Ooh, built on wow. wardrobes. This is unusual. It is. Looks like a. Well, it looks like a fireplace. It does. Lovely creatures, aren't they? Yeah, very cottagey. Oh, yeah, could nice. fit a double. Our double here, because yeah. you wouldn't need wardrobes. Double aspect, which is lovely. Lots of light. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's very that's... good. It's not overlooked. Mm. I quite like it. Yeah. Granted, the first property made Brian and Janet think it was a bit big, but floor plan wise, this house is probably round about the same sort of size. The difference is, it's more manageable. I think it will be a lot cheaper to run and it's certainly got no work to be done to it. You could literally open the door, move your furniture in and enjoy your retirement. One area they could expend some energy, should they fancy it, is the garage, which is ideal for storage or, well, I'll leave that up to Janet and Brian. Oh, oh I can see this oh. as a workshop. 
ideal um, for you. But if car can stay out there, this is... Yeah, um, this is for you, is this it? This is for me, yeah. I could maybe yeah. get a little pottery wheel or something as well. And you've got that room for your sewing. Yeah. And this room for your pottery. Yeah. <laughs> and I might give you some space. <laughs> <laughs> the garden of this property is a real treat, in my opinion. It's a classic English country garden with a large paved patio, a lily pond and a lawn bordered by mature shrubs and trees. Complete in time, you get a bounty of apples as well. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me how you got on inside. It's lovely. Isn't it? Mm, yeah. yeah. It it's... feels really homely. And really that, homely. that says a lot. Looking around, look, there's a little playhouse there yeah. for kiddies. Yeah. Little swing. Nice courtyard. It's, this is your granny and grandpa's house. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of everything really, isn't it? Yeah. How much would you say you'd need to pay for this property? Gosh, that's a difficult one. I'll say £500,000. OK. And I'm thinking it's £600,000. Good guess. The asking price for this house is £600,000. Oh, I was oh. way out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> £25,000 under budget and requiring little to no work, this charming and smartly presented country cottage is full of original features. As well as three reception rooms and three double bedrooms, the property is located in a sought-after Somerset village. I, w I was a bit worried about a semi, but having walked through the house, it's a lot more spacious than I could imagine, really. And the garden is just perfect, really. It, yeah, nice. it's it's manageable, S size far wise. more manageable than property one, I think. Um, I think Johnny's got fairly close to um, yeah. finding the sort of property we're after. As you step yeah. inside, you, you can imagine yourself in here. Yeah, um, you can imagine Mabel running around. Oh, our granddaughter, yeah. she'd love it here. <laughs> um, yeah. Somerset might have some beautiful scenery and lots of characterful villages to choose from, but for Janet and Brian, moving here means spending more time with family. So we're grabbing a cuppa with youngest daughter Rosie to find out how she's feeling about the prospect of having mum and dad as neighbours in the near future. So Rosie, how often do you see your mum and dad then? I see them every few months, yeah. they come down a lot because they've got their camper van. But a more permanent move is in the offing. Your daughter is Mabel. What she said about Granny and Grandpa coming to live nearby, is she excited? Oh, she's so excited. She'd is love it? them. I mean, every five minutes she's saying, where's, where's Granny Janet and Granddad Brian? Oh, lovely. So, um, yeah. Besides having grandchildren to have fun with, what do you think this part of the world will give Brian and Janet that they can't enjoy maybe in Reading? I think it's that, almost like a holiday feel, it's just more relaxed here. You think so? Far more relaxed, everything is slower paced and it, it does get, takes some getting used to, I think. How do you think they'll, they'll cope with retiring into a new area? I think it'll take them a while to slow down. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, they've, they've worked, both worked really hard, so um, It'd be nice to see them kind of enjoying things a bit more. Tell me what you think they'll be getting up to. I can imagine Dad being out with his camera and going for country walks and... Um, Mum, I don't know, I reckon something creative, even just kind of a pottery course, or I can see you yeah, doing something like that. Yeah, I would love to do that. There's yeah, lots of things yeah. going on like that. Yeah. Right so oh, yeah. It, it's all very positive. It's like it, there's no rush, but we have a time scale to potentially adhere to. <laughs> But you'll get something out of it as well, won't you? Oh, it'd be amazing. It'd be lovely to have them nearby to help out a little bit, it especially will. with the second one. It sounds like a great decision and it sounds like it'll bring the family even closer together. Yeah, definitely. Well, cheers to that and let's hope, um, let's hope we find somewhere for you. Ooh. Thank you very much, Johnny. <laughs> If our house hunters tempted you to make your own move to Somerset, then getting to grips with the county's property market is a good place to start. 
the average price of a detached home here is about 15 grand more than the national figure, currently standing at just under £479,000. The county has traditionally provided a more affordable option than neighbouring Devon or Dorset. But is it just value for money that brings people to this part of the West Country? I think what sets Somerset apart is the fact that we uh, have areas like Bath and Bristol literally on our doorstep and yet we're clearly not uh, a suburban entity of, the, of either of those cities. So we have retained that sense of Somersetness, if, if that's a word, uh, and so when you get here you know you're very much part of the West Country, very much part of the rural countryside of Britain, um, but we still have good communication links elsewhere and you can get exactly what you need. The property selection in Somerset is certainly varied, meaning whatever money you have to play with, you should be able to find a home that suits you. This attractive semi-detached stone cottage is ideally situated for country walks in the Mendip Hills. It has great period features inside as well as three bedrooms. It's currently available for a monthly rental of £995 or to buy for £395,000. If you're looking for something bigger, then how about this five bedroom detached family home in a village not far from Bath? The property has a bright open plan kitchen diner and a south facing garden. Yours for £850,000. But if you're just looking to take a break in this fabulous county, then you can't go wrong with this converted Victorian railway carriage. This one sleeps too, with prices starting at £140 per night. We'll be wrapping up our viewings with a mystery house located in the hamlet of Birtle. But on our way we're stopping off in the town of Glastonbury, where a trip to the local reclamation yard might get Janet and Brian thinking about the type of property we've got in store for them. Now we're just a few miles from the mystery property, so I thought I'd stop off here just for a few minutes, let you have a ruse around all the wonderful paraphernalia and bits and bobs here with a mind that the property you're going to see, it's empty. Ah. So Ooh. you've got free right. reign to bring anything from any century into the house. I'll let you mooch around here and I'll go ahead, okay? Okay. Okay. I'm a huge fan of hunting out hidden gems in places like this, but the mystery house is calling. So whilst they have a rummage, Oh, that's, oh, that's nice. nice. <laughs> I'm on my way to our final property offering. Like a lot of mystery houses, this property started out life as something completely different. It was a schoolhouse. I often get a bit nervous about showing someone a brand new house, especially when it hasn't got furniture in it. But already you get a warm sense when you come into this kitchen and that's helped by the worktop. But everything is brand spanking new. And for Brian, the ex-builder doesn't want to do any more building, that should be music to his ears. Having built their own home from scratch 40 years ago, I think our buyers will recognise the hard work and craftsmanship that's gone into creating this house. The only thing left to do now is to show it off to them. Okay, so it's time for the mystery house to reveal itself. And it's this converted school. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. a school a school. That's amazing. Looks really good. Before we go in, though, what do you think? I mean, it's, it's very contemporary. I know it's different to the house you live in at the moment. It is very, very different, isn't it? it? Yeah. Well, we like contemporary. Do you? We do. Yeah. Well, yeah. you've come to the right place, my dear. Yeah. Come with me. Yeah. The original building dates back to around 1900 and was operating as a school until 2015. Bought by the current owners the following year, it's since been developed into a stylish and modern family home. Go on in. <laughs> Utility and downstairs WC. The galley kitchen. Wow. Brand spanking new. Wow. Wow. <laughs> The galley oh. spilling out onto your patio. It keeps coming. It 
Ricky. Oh from... my good. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Oh. Wow. Oh. Yeah. There's a lot of scope to do whatever you like yeah. here. Yeah. I'm going to show you a living room that is probably four times the size of the biggest living room you've ever seen. Oh, Come really? On, Seriously? Wow. Oh. I doubt you've sat oh. in bigger sitting oh. rooms than this. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, I don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say. I love it. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And I've only I mean, seen two of... rooms, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but these, these two rooms are bigger than the last two houses. Yeah. And they've done, done such a nice job of it, it It's beautifully finished, isn't it? You've reacted by far the best I've ever seen in any of the houses we've seen so far. So why don't you yeah. go and have a look at it on your own? Yeah. And I'll meet you. I'll try and find you somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a trail of nuts or something. <laughs> I'll catch you later on. Thank you. Do that. Well, it's, it's a true mystery house. Some people would run a mile, but these guys, they seem to love it. I'm so chuffed, it's, it's impeccable. If it wasn't clear from the outside, this property is a bungalow. The staircase only leads to a galleried landing, which provides access to a balcony. More on that later. Four double bedrooms are located downstairs, with a family bathroom situated between the two smaller rooms and the larger two benefiting from their own en-suites. Oh, uh, oh so my gosh. The en-suite for this bedroom? <laughs> yeah. Wow, this oh. is really nice, isn't it? Plenty of windows. Oh, wow, wow, this, wow, wow. Oh, goodness oh, it's me. It's luxury, isn't it? It is, luxury isn't luxury living. Oh, that's another nice bedroom, isn't it? Oh, and another en-suite. Another en-suite. Oh. How amazing. You could make a lovely bedroom with this, yeah. couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Sold. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a better word to hear in a property tour? I think not. And they haven't even seen the garden yet. There's a large gravel driveway at the front, whilst the patio and lawn at the rear are southwest facing, with a stunning outlook. The best place to enjoy the view, though, is from that balcony I mentioned earlier. Oh, these views. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Mikey. You could have, like, a, wow. a little cocktail bar and sit there and look out at the view. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Did I hear it's, goodness gracious? Oh. It's just amazing, isn't it? It's pretty special. Yeah, it is. Impressed with this place? We are. Very. Yeah, we are. You're We're not going to be able to afford this, are yeah. we? <laughs> I'll let you go first, Brian, to give you <laughs> a chance. Um, I'm going to go for £650,000. OK. Janet, impress me. Now, I'm looking at £675,000. I know it's well out of our budget. Yeah, well, unfortunately, you're both way out with your guesses because yeah. this house is on the market for six hundred thousand pounds no really seriously? really oh seriously <laughs> wow that is in our budget <laughs> that's yeah that is in our budget yeah no we could do that your reactions i don't see that every day uh. you know in every room so Oh, that, this is yeah, special. Phenomenal. This house is special for you. This impeccable conversion of a former schoolhouse might be £25,000 under budget, but it's exceeded all expectations. There are two enormous open-plan living spaces, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and tearing ourselves away from the house for one moment, we can't forget those exceptional countryside views. When I walked into this house, it just made me feel, let's get the removal lorry in. <laughs> I, I just love it, I love it. I could picture us here. It's perfect. I think when we walked into this house, we could see instantly that we would be happy here. Um, it just gave us those vibes and I could see Janet welling up a little bit. 
We've always liked this type of design, but we didn't think we would ever be able to um, find it down in Somerset. To know that it's in our budget is, is brilliant. It's um, unbelievable, really. Each year in the UK, the leaves turn from green to red, signalling the start of autumn. For me, that means slowing down and getting cosy indoors. But if you're a cider farmer in Somerset, it means getting outside and gearing up to harvest your apple crop. One farm in the village of Kingsbury Episcopi has been pressing cider for more than two centuries. I'm stopping by at their busiest time of year to meet Managing Director Matilda Tempoli. I like your office. It's pretty good, isn't it? It's, it's gorgeous. So we are in cider country, yeah? We are. We, this is the historic heart of cider country in the UK, right here, this, this village. Why? What, what makes this the centre of it then? Kingsbury Episcopi has been known as having um, the best sort of land for cider apple trees. So since the 1920s, it's been recognised as having the perfect conditions to get amazing tasting fruit. Yeah. It's the soil, soil, sunshine, great tasting apples. So how many varieties are here? We have 105 different varieties of apples, 20 different varieties of pears, and they're all traditional to this area. So you just produce cider here then? We produce cider, uh, we actually produce apple juice, but we also produce Somerset Cider Brandy. Brandy? Okay. The Somerset Cider Brandy Company here got the first commercial licence for distilling cider in um, the oh, UK really? in 1989. I'd love to find out more about the process, can we? Yeah, let's go. Let's go and see the shaking. Oh, it's done, isn't it? Many apples will drop to the ground naturally, but the hesitant ones get a helping hand from the shaker. And it's hard at work in the orchard today. OK, here she goes. <laughs> Literally shaking it. Why do I find this so amusing? Once collected, the apples are turned into cider. Half of all cider produced here will be put through a still to create apple spirit or eau de vie. After that, it's into the oak barrels to mature. Once it's matured for three years, it can then be considered a brandy. But which tastes better, cider or cider brandy? First, the, the raw material for everything we do, which is the, our Somerset cider. Okay. Um, so this is a really traditional Somerset cider. It's made with um, two thirds of those bittersweet apples and then a third sharp apples. They're ones with lots of acidity, which give it a nice clean finish. taste of Somerset that. Um, but we've also got something called Somerset Pomona. It is an apple spirit but we make it by uh, blending a juice together with a cider brandy. We then put it back into barrel for a couple of years so it gets oxidised, it gets fatter, it gets richer and we drink it in exactly the same way that you drink a port. It's not overly sweet but it's sweet enough to make the most of a nice bit of savoury food. Somerset cheddar is perfect accompaniment. That's really nice. Shall we try some cider brandy now? I thought you would never ask. These apples were picked at least 21, 22 years ago. Some of them will have been picked 30 years ago. Oh, they're older than me. <laughs> this is your kind of signature brandy then, cider brandy. This is our oldest cider brandy. It's been 20 years in barrel at least. Right, so this, this this smells serious now. That's a lot punchier. Wow. Suddenly, it tastes a lot more Christmassy, special occasion. It's quite special, this one. I love the cider, but I think I like this one. This Somerset Pomona. Yeah. So. Nice middle ground as well. It is. An easy drinker, love that one. This is a bit grown up for me. Cheers. Yes. Well, the mystery house seems to have worked its charms, but what do Janet and Brian want to do next? Is there an offer in the pipeline?
Well, I'm not going to ask you which of the three properties is your favourite. The Mystery House is, has blown everything out of the water, hasn't it? It has, Definitely. Yeah. It has. Yeah. yeah. Why? I just, as soon as I walked in there, I thought, oh yeah, I could see myself living here. We had in mind to build a new house at one stage, and that was the type of design yeah. that we would have done. Okay, that's so, encouraging, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Now, that big room, what are you going to do with it? Well, right at the end, I think it would be quite good to maybe put a staging or a floor, slight oh, hired good floor, idea. and nice big squashy sofas. That's a brilliant idea. That would break up the room. Yeah. I'm annoyed I didn't think of that. Yeah. <laughs> good for you. Yeah. What do you want to do about that house now? Are you in a position to make an offer? We're still up for sale. We've got people looking round our house. OK. So, fingers crossed, by the time we get back home, there might be a positive result. We'll give you the estate agent's details and leave it with you. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. On the condition that you tell me when you make that move. We will. We will. We'll let you know everything that happens. I want to come that. back in and see what you've done with that room. All right. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. So, it looks like the Mystery House, with stiff competition, is still heads and shoulders over the other options. I'm chuffed to bits. They liked it from the get-go. What happens next? Well, it's in budget. They loved it. It's all down to them and the owners and the estate agents in between. I can't wait to find out what happens next. And when I know, you'll know. A second viewing just days later confirmed that the Mystery House really was the right property for Janet and Brian. They're holding fire whilst they wait for an offer on their current home, but hope to move forward with the property purchase as soon as possible. If you'd like to escape to the country in England, Northern Ireland, Scotland or Wales and need our help, you can apply online at BBC... Thank you.